Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last class, we derived the mass conservation equation using the Reynolds transport theorem. And uh, we said that uh, depending on what uh, extensive quantity that you are going to use, you can uh, basically uh, derive the mass conservation, momentum conservation or the energy conservation equation. So, today we are to going to derive the momentum conservation equation. Okay, so, if you use uh, uh, B equal to basically uh, M V, okay, you can get B will be V and you can derive, you can get this expression which will be uh, similar to the mass conservation, but you will have more forces uh, or more stress terms in your momentum conservation, right. So, that will give you rho u i by d t, why i here, okay, because momentum is a vector quantity. So, you can derive it for individual velocities, okay, individual directions i, j and k, right. The mass and uh, energy are scalar quantities, okay, so you will have just one equation. Right. So, this will be del by del x j rho u i u j and then uh, this is basically your uh, this is equally rate of change okay, this one and this is uh, your flux or the, the advection okay, how they are basically being transported through the surfaces okay, and that should be equal to the forces. Okay there is some forces acting on the body okay that's the newton's uh, second law that uh, this entire thing we'll see it shortly this represents basically the rate of change of momentum and that will be equal to the forces okay so what are the forces that we have in a uh, fluid okay so we are writing in term which is basically the due to the stress and plus due to the body force okay so i'm using g which is i mean which is typically used in the simulation which is the gravity force okay but it can be magnetic force or it can be any electric force or any force that you want right so if you are let's say doing the magnetic dynamic solution then it will have the magnetic force right now the most uh, critical quantity here is the tau ij right if you uh, want to write this expression uh, in the vector form so that will be del rho u by del t plus del dot rho u u okay and which will be equal to tau okay and plus rho g okay okay so this is how you write in the vector form and you many of you may be familiar with the vector form. So, that is why I wrote it for you, but this uh, does not I mean this is very trivial that you have uh, rate of change is equal to the forces rate of change is equal to forces, but then what are the forces that we have in the fluid particle and that is where the derivation uh, becomes very very important and this was basically given by Navier and Stokes separately okay, and that is what is called the Navier uh, Navier Stokes equations. So, before that also people tried to uh, uh, derive this expression, but they did not consider the viscous forces, right. So, uh, uh, that is why they are uh, they are not the complete conservation law, you can have you might have heard about the Eilerich equation, where you do not have the viscous term and uh, that cannot be applied to any fluid or uh, any realistic uh, flow, where you have the got the viscosity, okay. Now, if you look at the variables that you have here, okay, as of now you have uh, uh, u, v, w, okay, but uh, also rho if it is compressible, okay, but also you have this tau term, okay. What is the tau? This is a stress term, the stress that the fluid is experiencing, right. So, we need to find out the stress, okay. Now, the stress, uh, if you see in a fluid element, okay, if you have a three dimensional fluid element, okay. So, this is your three dimensional fluid element, okay. This is your I, okay. This is your J, and let us say this is your K, okay. So, in that fluid element, you can have forces which is let us say uh, I this tau is basically tau Ij, it has got two uh, indices, okay. So, tau I is I is basically in the direction, uh, uh, it I mean where the element is present. 
and j is the direction in which the force is acting right so if you take let's say section here at a given i okay and then you apply the force in the same direction right then you will get this so if i equal to 1 so then what you will get is here is basically tau 1 1 right but in the same element you can apply the force in the upward direction okay uh, and if that direction is j or y that will be tau 1 2 right so it's i equal to x j is equal to y and k equal to z right and uh, similarly you can uh, apply in the z direction that will be tau 1 3 right similarly if you cut across uh, let's say in the vertical direction okay and then you can have basically tau 2 1 tau 2 2 and tau 2 3 similarly if you cut in the the span wise or the in the third direction which is the k direction z direction then you will have tau 3 1 tau 3 2 and tau 3 3 so the tau is now a matrix okay it's actually a tensor matrix is not the correct term it's a it's a tensor okay tau 1 1 tau 1 2 tau 1 3 although it looks like matrix okay but there are uh, certain rules which are applicable to tensor but not which are not applicable to the matrix okay. tau 3 1 tau 3 2 tau 3 3 this is tau 2 1 okay now you can see that there are some uh, uh, in the diagonal which is tau 2 1 tau 1 1 tau 2 2 and tau 3 3 okay so these are basically uh, uh, the stress in which uh, the acting force in the same direction in which the element is present right so these are basically the normal stresses so it's tau 1 1 tau 1 2 tau 1 3 are basically the normal stresses okay or the linear stresses right whereas this tau 1 2 tau 1 3 or any other quantities basically what they have this tau 1 2 so this is uh, the direction is 1 but the force is acting in the, uh, the in the j direction or the second direction so what it will do it will give you some shear right so that is uh, basically the shear stress so these are basically the normal stresses and these are the shear stresses right all this tau 1 2 tau 2 1 tau 3 1 tau 2 2 3 and so on and so forth right and now uh, remember this uh, this uh, tau is a symmetric tensor that means your tau 1 2 will be equal to tau 2 1 similarly tau 3 1 equal to tau 1 3 and similarly tau 2 3 equal to tau 3 2 okay so this is a symmetric tensor but uh, even if it is a symmetric tensor you have at least six unknown quantities which is tau 1 1 tau uh, 2 2 tau 3 3 tau 1 2 tau 2 3 and tau 3 1 right so how do you get these six stress quantities and then only you will be able to basically solve this Navier-Stokes equations right so let's try uh, deriving this uh, stress quantity okay now uh, if the element the fluid element is at rest okay then also some stress is acting on this some force is acting on this and what is that force is the pressure force right you can have pressure acting on from normal direction everywhere so it will be part of the normal stress right so the pressure is acting on this right if the fluid is in, uh, uh, is in static state so this force uh, is called the hydrostatic force or hydrostatic stress okay force per unit area is called the stress right but when the fluid is in motion you will have additional stresses because of the motion of the fluid okay because you will have uh, 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 the velocity changing across layers okay so that will give you the different kind of stresses right so that that will be called as the deviatoric stress right so we'll basically divide our uh, tau in ij into two part one is the hydrostatic stress another is the deviatoric stress okay now i'm, I'm introducing uh, uh, a term just to represent it properly in your uh, using tensor form is uh, introducing a chronica delta delta ij is chronicer i hope i am right okay chronicer delta sometimes they don't use c okay okay so what is the property of this chronicer delta so delta ij is equal to 1 
if j is equal to 1 ok if j is equal to 1 otherwise it will be 0 if j is not equal to 1 then this will become 0 so the delta ij value will be 0 sorry j is equal to i if j is equal to i then it is 1 if j is not equal to i then it is 0 right so uh, if you uh, use this relation then you will see that delta ij the pressure will only act when i equal to j so then if you have you will if you write this stress term tau ij let's say for only for hydrostatic okay then it will be only minus p because this will be delta 1 1 it will be 0 which is 1 2 this is 1 3 0 0 minus p 0 0 0 minus p right so that uh, as you can see that this is only obtaining the normal direction this because pressure always acts normal to the surface so you can get this hydrostatic term so now we have basically found one term which is the hydrostatic term which is which acts even if the fluid is in, is in static state okay uh, the more complicated part is the deviatoric part okay even in the deviatoric part we have two terms uh, which are basically the normal stress or the linear stress as well as the uh, the shear stress and we will uh, shortly derive those things ok. Now, what we knew, know from our uh, experience or what we have discussed in the very first class uh, is that uh, in the fluid the stress is proportional to the strain rate right. So, if you are simple minded and the flow is just 1 d, so you can write tau equal to mu d u by d y ok that is what you have might have studied uh, in your undergrad may be the fluid maintenance course right. But now uh, we have a strain rate tensor in our case right because if the flow is 3 dimensional ok. So, if the flow is 3 dimensional let us say this is your strain rate ok this this value you know remember strain rate tensor I am writing ok. So, you uh, you will be known from your equation. So, this thing you know you do not know the tau, but we know that tau is related to somehow this strain rate tensor that we have ok del v by del x del v by del y whatever ok. Now, this strain rate tensor can be written in two parts ok. One is del u i by del x j plus del u j by del x i ok and plus half del u i by del x j minus del u j by del x i right. Now, if you closely look uh, both the parts okay, I have not done anything I have just basically added this del u by, by del x i and subtracted that right. So, uh, if you look observe it closely ok this is uh, basically your symmetric part right. So, if you write your standard tensor here ok. So, uh, this is the symmetric part and this is the anti symmetric part ok. Let me complete this thought first anti symmetric or sometimes also called exquisimetric ok tensor and I I am sure you know this quantity what is this? This is basically the vorticity right and this is your symmetric tensor what it does it basically deforms the fluid the forms of fluid element right. So, this is what is important for your stress ok. This will not cause you any stress in anti symmetric tensor uh, because this is a vorticity and that will give you the rotation right. So, the symmetric tensor is what is uh, important for the derivation of uh, stresses ok. So, I will write it as E i j ok and this will be basically half omega i j, but remember this uh, this is not contributing to stress. contributing to stress ok. And this is anti symmetric you can see it uh, easily. Uh, so, if I can write it as uh, A i j or just if you write omega i j right. So, that will be del u i by del x j minus del u j by del x i right. So, if you do uh, omega j i that will become del u j by del x i minus del u i by del x j 
right so that is basically minus omega ic right so you can see this is an anti symmetric tensor on the other hand if you write this eij okay you you can exchange j and i it will remain the same that will become aj eji so this is the symmetric tensor right so you can write the symmetric tensor here uh, okay so the eij can be written uh, as a basically del u by del x here it will be half del u by del y plus del v by del x because it is i equal to 1 j equal to 2 i equal to 1 and then j equal to 3 if you do that will be half del u by del z plus del w by del x and similarly you can write the entire uh, standard tensor so this will be del v by del y this will be del w by del z this quantity will be similar to this and you will have some more quantity here okay this will be similar to this okay and then you have quantity which is this is uh, i equal to 2 and j equal to 3 right so that will be half del p by del z plus del w by del y and here it will be half del w by del y okay and del p by del z okay and this would be half this is uh, i equal to 3 and j equal to 1 right so this will be half del w by del x plus del u by del z okay please verify this that uh, uh, what we are doing is correct okay this will be probably half del u by del y plus del u by del x let's see how many independent quantities that we have 1 2 3 okay, because a symmetric tensor so this is 4 and uh, this is 5 and this is 6 right we have 6 stress uh, standard tensors okay that is present okay so we uh, our goal is to basically use this standard tensor and uh, derive the expression for the stress term okay now uh, i am going through this derivation uh, because it is uh, important to understand why the pressure in the incompressible flow is not a thermodynamic pressure right so you might have uh, read about this uh, that uh, uh, in the case of uh, um, incompressible flow you don't use the equation of state okay and that's why you have to go through this pressure poison equation right in the compressible flow we use the equation of state and that is very very helpful because you can relate the pressure to the uh, uh, the density and the temperature okay so let's try to find out that why uh, we cannot use the uh, thermodynamic pressure uh, in your in our uh, in composite flow so we, for that we have to basically go through the derivation right so what we are going to do is basically we are going to basically express our uh, 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 stress in terms of strain right so strain rate tensor is basically e k l and c i j k l so why i am writing like this why e k l because i g is the are the free index okay it cannot be basically used here so what i have done here this is a tensor of order 2 right that is the order 1 tensor is basically a vector right and this is also a tensor of order 2 right so in order to basically use uh, one tensor and get uh, another tensor what you need is a transformation tensor and that has to be tensor of order 4 and uh, uh, why do you need tensor of order 4 i mean to understand that you can just uh, you might have read about this transformation matrix right so let's say if a, a vector okay which is b equal to ai plus bj plus ck right and you want to transform it to another vector w right so if you want to do that okay so you would require a matrix okay to transform this abc into another value for another basis vector right so this is what is your transformation matrix so if you have let's let's say this is t11 t12 t13 t21 t22 t33 t31 t32 t33 so then if you want to get this first element let's call it capital a 
that will be equal to T 1 1 A plus T 1 2 B plus T 1 3 C right. So, this is your first order tensor and in order to get another first order tensor from that okay, you need a second order tensor right. This is the tensor of order 2 right. Similarly, you have a second order tensor which is your uh, stranded tensor and we want to get this our uh, uh, stress tensor from that. Okay. So, we need a tensor of order 4 okay. that is which is what is C i j k l right. Now, it is a very uh, complicated tensor because it will have how many elements. So, in vector you have is a first order tensor. So, your element will be 3 right this is a second order tensor. So, that will be element what how many elements we had was so number of elements will be 3 square right. So, 3 to the power orderable tensor. So, if you have fourth order tensor that will be 3 to the power 4 will, that means we will have 81 elements okay, in this tensor and finding out all the 81 elements is not easy okay, for a given fluid. Right. So, we will try to reduce it using some property of the fluid. Okay. So, that we can find out uh, this C i j k l into something that we know for example, we know the viscosity of the fluid and we also know that uh, our uh, uh, stress in a very simple flow depends on the viscosity. Right. So, our goal is to find C i j k l okay. uh, in terms of let us say viscosity or related quantity, but it should be a, a, a variable which does not have too many unknowns right like we have 81 unknowns here. Right. So, what we will do we will assume that the fluid is homogeneous and isotropic. Okay. So, what do you mean homogeneous? Homogeneous means that is it is position independent. So, whatever quantity that we have it is independent of the uh, the position right. So, that is homogeneous. Similarly, uh, it uh, what we are saying that is isotropic that means it is direction independent. That means, if you rotate it okay, across uh, uh, let us say uh, any, the, any basis vector the value will remain unchanged right. So, if you assume these two quantities you can write or represent this C i j k l into basically uh, three variables. Okay. Basically, okay, before we go there, we can write it in terms of, uh, uh, so we are basically trying to find out a scalar from this C i j k l, okay, because we want to reduce this 81 unknowns. Okay. So, this can be written and the scalar s can be written as C i j k l and then it will be multiplied by uh, you will, you will require vector because we need to basically contract and remove all these independent variables i j k n l okay, b j c k and d l right. So, these are the four vectors that we have okay, which will each will contract with c i j k l and ultimately give you this scalar right. Now, if you assume that fluid is homogeneous and isotropic right. So, that means, uh, it will be uh, rotation independent right. So, if you rotate it, uh, it will not change. That means, if you can take two vectors at a time, you can let us say take a dot b. Okay. So, uh, this basically this these are vectors. So, that is nothing but a b cos theta. So, since that theta is not changing, right. So, what you can do you can write this in terms of the uh, series of two vectors, right. So, how many of such series that you can do? I mean, this say we are doing assuming the conditions of isotropy, right. So, that will become so we can write in a series of three vectors. So, this will be alpha a i b i and this is c j d j. Okay. So, we took a b together and c d together. Similarly, you can the beta okay, uh, a i now the you can take c i okay, and then b j and d j. Right. And similarly, you can take the third one third combination okay, that will be your gamma this is now we have taken a i d i and then basically b j and c j. Okay. So, now basically we reduce our 81 unknowns to basically 3 unknowns and of course, we have to fix uh, uh, these vector quantities that is uh, a i uh, b j I mean whatever uh, the vectors that we have. We will again make use of our Kronika delta right. So, this can be written as alpha a i. So, now it is b i I want to write in terms of b j right. So, that will be 
b i delta i j that means, so I am writing b i is equal to b j delta i j right why because when j equals to i then only it, it will be valid. So, this can be written as uh, b j delta i j similarly you can see this is c j now I want it into c k right. So, you could actually because this is a repeated index. So, you can use this c k c k c k d k. So, c k and there is be d l delta k l right. Similarly, if you use this uh, beta, so that will be a and c. So, this is a i and you want c k right c k delta i k right and then you have b j and d l right. So, that will be delta j l and plus gamma a i and you have d is l right. So, d l delta i l and then you have b j and c k delta k l right. So, you can now compare this is basically c i j k l right. So, you can you can compare these values and this will give you uh, c i j k l a i b j c k d l. So, this a i b j c k d l will get cancelled out. So, your c i j k l will become alpha delta i j delta k l right and uh, ok. Now, so this is how we expressed it and now it has to be multiplied by your e k l right. Do look at this expression this is your tau i j right. So, let us so then your entire thing will be c i j k l e k l will be become alpha delta i j delta k l e k l plus beta delta i k delta i l e k l and plus gamma delta i l delta k l e e k l ok. So, before I go to the next uh, uh, slide you can just see this is delta k l e k l right. So, this can be written as e k k what is e k k is basically del u k by del x k right or in other words if you are this is del dot u or basically del u by del x plus del p by del y plus del w by del z right. So, this has become your alpha delta i j e k k right and uh, similarly you can use the expression here. So, this is i k and j l. So, you can reduce basically you can contract it ok. So, this will become beta delta. So, if you contract it this is i k and that will give you um, delta j l right delta i k delta j l and this will be e k l right and similarly you have gamma delta i l delta k l and delta e k l right. So, if you do the further construction you will have c i j k l into e k l will be alpha delta i j e k k right plus beta you will you can contact it here both l and k will be contacted ok and what we will get is basically e i j plus gamma e j i right this is the expression that you got ok this is nothing but your tau i j ok. Now, you can further use the property of the symmetry because this tau i j equal to tau j i right. So, if you use this property of symmetry uh, you can show that your beta is equal to gamma right. You can uh, uh, write an expression here and you will find that this beta equal to gamma. So, uh, you can write this expression tau i j is equal to alpha delta i j e k k. Please go back and show this that beta is equal to gamma and plus beta into 2 e i j ok. 
Now, you can uh, basically uh, we know that our uh, stress is proportional to the strain rate right in the case of fluid in the solid we have discussed this is proportional stress is proportional to the strain right. So, if you use this identity, so this is your strain rate tensor E i j. So, then your beta becomes your viscosity okay. and then alpha is also a viscosity okay, which is called uh, which is denoted as lambda. Uh, so, this is called the first coefficient of viscosity. of viscosity and this one is the second coefficient and this is related to the uh, bulk viscosity and it will only act when your dilatation is not 0. So, basically when del dot u is not 0 which you can see here also because this is related to only E k k. So, let us write it here lambda delta i j E k k plus mu 2 mu E i j right this is your tau i j right. So, we related our stress to the strain rate tensor right. Now, we want to find out how the lambda is related to mu right. So, what we will do now is that uh, take this stress of this uh, tensor stress uh, tensor. So, we will add this tau 1 1 tau 1 2 tau 2 2 tau 3 3 and basically divide by 3 right. So, this is tau what is tau 1 1 delta this is E 1 1 right which is basically del u by del x right see i equal to j right plus 2 mu E 1 1 right which is again the uh, this is uh, del dot u just one second. So, the tau 1 1 if you do, so this is delta will become uh, i will become 1, j will become 1. So, this is lambda and then uh, this will be present. So, E k k is nothing but del dot u okay, and plus 2 mu E 1 1 which is basically just your del u by del x. Okay. Similarly, you can have tau 2 2 which is lambda del dot u. Okay, I am missing the vector signs. So, please be careful okay, 2 mu del v by del y okay, and tau 3 3 is equal to lambda del dot u plus 2 mu del w by del z. Okay, uh, so, remember we have missed one quantity here which is basically your, uh, so this is only the, the deviatoric part. So, you can have you must have the uh, the pressure part also. So, that will be minus p delta i j right. So, it will be there everywhere or what you can do you can write it as just only this is tau i j deviatoric will be this okay this is tau i j deviatoric and you have hydrostatic part also so that will be this will be minus p minus p and minus p if you add 3 all this 3 and divide by 3 okay take an average of that so this will be tau 1 1 plus tau 1 2 tau 2 2 plus tau 3 3 by 3 will become uh, minus p okay plus lambda plus 2 mu by 3 plus lambda delta del dot u plus 2 mu by 3 and that is also del dot u because del u by del x plus del p by del y plus del w by del z so, that is also del dot u okay. and we define this as a mechanical pressure okay. we call it p mech. So, minus p mech is equal to minus p plus lambda plus 2 mu by 3 del dot u. Okay. Now, this is an interesting uh, term. So, this is the mechanical pressure and what this is the thermodynamic pressure. So, this for this p you can use p equal to rho r t, but for this this is the mechanical pressure you cannot use p equal to rho r t relation because that is not the thermodynamic pressure. There is a thermodynamic pressure plus you have something which is coming due to the, uh, the divergence due to the volumetric change in the, the fluid. right? Now, it so happens that in uh, I mean this p mechanical depends on the basically your uh, the degrees of freedom right. So, if the degrees of freedom are let us say only 3 that means only the translational degrees of freedom there. So, energy can be very uh, I mean uh, transferred only in the the energy mode are only the translational then this p mechanical and p will be the same right. But if you have the 
vibrational component also or rotational component also that means the degrees of freedom are higher. In that case your P mechanical and P will not be same and your volumetric uh, uh, strain uh, will play a role okay, in determining the P mechanical. Okay, so, that is uh, one thing, uh, but another thing is that let us say if you have a system which is changing very fast, you are changing the thermodynamic state of the system very, very fast, then the system has to adjust uh, to get the equilibrium. But sometimes the response time of the system is not similar to the time which is at which you are changing the system. So, it in the, that cases also your P mechanical will not be equal to P. But uh, those are uh, situations which are very rare situations. Okay. For example, if you have a balloon which is basically changing the state very, very fast, you are uh, expanding and contracting very, very fast, okay. then uh, uh, your P mechanical will not be equal to the P. But in most cases, okay, uh, in, in our normal situations, okay, uh, first of all, if the translation motion is only important, uh, translation mo mode of energy is the only important, and the uh, other thing is uh, if the uh, the change in the system is not very, very fast, then your P mechanical uh, may be equal to P and in that case you can write this lambda plus 2 mu by 3 del dot u is equal to 0. Right? Now, here two things here either del dot u equal to 0 or you have lambda plus 2 by 2 mu by 3 equal to 0. So, this is uh, anyway valid for your incompressive flow. So, uh, for the incompressive flow it will anyway go to 0. Okay? Uh, in other cases, you get this situation lambda plus 2 mu by 3 equal to 0 that gives you basically lambda equal to minus 2 mu by 3. So, we are relating your second coefficient of viscosity for the uh, with the first coefficient of viscosity and uh, uh, so this is called the Stokes hypothesis and why it is hypothesis because you cannot prove it. Okay. It can be proven uh, if uh, it is the only mode of energy is your translational mode. But in other cases, it is an hypothesis, but it works well for most of the situations. Uh, there are two reasons. One is that uh, either the del dot u is very, very small okay, and then on also it will go to 0, thus uh, this entire term will go to 0 lambda plus 2 mu by 3 okay, or your lambda plus 2 mu by 3 is very, very small. Okay. However, if you go to a very high speed flow, okay, uh, let us say the hypersonic cases and all, in that those cases this term becomes very important and the hypo Stokes hypothesis may not be uh, valid because there the vibrational mode of energy becomes very, very important. Uh, uh, the molecules start to dissociate, you will have ion formation and in those cases uh, you cannot use this relation of lambda equal to minus 2 by 3 and you have to basically uh, look for the variation of the bulk viscosity. Okay. So, uh, that is uh, mostly in the situation where, where you have the hypersonic flows and that is why uh, have to basically do special treatment uh, of the bulk viscosity. Now, let us finish uh, this thought I mean for the normal situation. So, this we have already derived lambda and mu. Okay. So, lambda plus 2 by 3 mu equal to 0. So, if you use all these terms, so I have used this uh, tau ij is equal to okay, uh, minus p delta ij and plus sigma ij. Okay. This is the deviatoric term. And this is your pressure term. So, if you use that expression, we had this tau ij by del xj, right. And so, that will become if you use this tau ij form. So, this is minus del by del xj p delta ij. Remember, this uh, uh, this will only work when i equal to j, and because our direction is in i here, right, this is I am doing for rho i. So, this will become minus del p by del x i, right. And similarly, you have this sigma ij which will come here and sigma ij I have written in the uh, in the this form this is nothing but uh, mu and e plus 2 e minus ok. This is uh, 2 e mu and plus lambda delta ij e k k. Right. This is E k k is delta U k by del x k lambda is equal to minus 2 by 3 mu and E i j is basically del u i by del x j half del u by del x j plus del u j by del x i. So, this completes our derivation. So, that means we can calculate the stress term using the velocity gradient that we have present. So, now the number of variables have reduced. Okay. Uh, the only thing that you need to know is now the viscosity right, which is this quantity. 
Okay, the viscosity may vary with the temperature uh, as it happens in the uh, case of compressor flow and we will have some laws to basically how to calculate the viscosity with the temperature, variation with the temperature. For incompressor flow, the viscosity can be assumed to be constant because uh, the temperature fluctuation is not there, temperature variation is not there. And uh, for the incompressor flow, you can take this uh, uh, quantity to, to be 0, 2 by 3 delta Ij, del uk del xk because this, this quantity goes to 0. Okay. So, uh, at the end, let us uh, uh, derive for the incompressor flow. So, incompressor flow you have rho equal to constant, that is one quantity. Okay. And del uk by del xk is equal to del dot u equal to 0. Okay. So, if you work that out, so then you will have del sigma i j by del x j. So, this is our sigma i j, right. So, partial sigma i j by del x j will be del by del x j, okay, and del u i by del x j plus del u j by del x i, okay, and uh, uh, if you work that out okay, and you will take the all three components, okay, so you will get this del to u by del x square plus del to u i by del y square and plus del to u i by del x square del z square, right. So, which is nothing but del square u i. Okay. So, and uh, recall that you need to basically make sure that del dot u goes to 0 when you are deriving this. Okay. So, those components uh, will cancel out and this is the expression that you get and this becomes even simpler for the incompressor flow. Uh, there is no second coefficient of viscosity and uh, uh, that is why the, all the terms is minus 2 by 3 delta i j e k k goes to 0 okay. and you be, it becomes very, very simple. It is a Laplacian term okay. and that is the reason as we will uh, study later that in the case of incompressible flow, it is more like a, a elliptic equation because of this presence of this Laplacian term, where in the case of compressible flow, it is more like an hyperbolic system. Okay. So, with that, uh, we will uh, uh, conclude our thought. Okay. In the next class, we will look at some of the non-conservation form and we will also derive the energy equation. And uh, this is, uh, this was a quite uh, um, extensive derivation. So, I would request you to please go back and uh, uh, basically work on this. Okay, and uh, we will uh, meet in the next class. Thank you very much.